Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and if you're new to this channel, I make sewing and DIY fashion videos. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out. Today's video is going to be a collaboration with my friend Letitia. And I think I even subscribed to her since I was in high school. So that's like almost 10 years now. Yes, almost 10 years now. <laughs> but Letitia also has a DIY channel, all sorts of really cool DIY. And here are some of my favorite creations from her. both decided to transform collared shirts. So for my shirt, I thrifted a woman's shirt that is a little bit loose fitted on me. And I'll be showing you guys how you can tailor it by adding darts to make it fit your body and hug your curves more. After my video, don't forget to head on over to Letitia's channel to see what she made from her shirt and subscribe to her for more awesome DIY ideas as well. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. This is a woman's shirt I thrifted for under $5. You can use a men's shirt for this as well. The first thing I did was seam rip the sleeves off and also opened up the side seams. I've altered shirts before where I didn't take apart the shirt and it does work for a quick fix, but it won't be as clean looking. This top has one dart on each side in the front and darts in the back as well. So before I can make adjustments to them, I have to seam rip them all open. If your shirt has breast pockets, you'll also want to remove the pockets first before making any changes. Pin the center front of the shirt to the center front line of the dress form. If you don't have a dress form, you can try to eyeball on yourself and just make changes as you go. It'll be a little more challenging for you, but it's very possible. Now that the darts are reopened, I can reshape it to fit my dress form. The shirt and fabric will tell you what it wants to do. You kind of just have to keep playing around with how much you're folding and taking in and make sure that your dart is always pointing towards the apex. Once I have the side dart made, I make sure to pin the side seam down as well and it should naturally drape down so make sure you're not pulling or forcing the fabric to the side. There's still some space at the waist that I want to remove, so I'm going to add another dart along the princess seam to the apex. This one will be a fisheye dart since I want it to blend back out towards the bottom to keep the size of it. Pinch the excess fabric to fit the waist and pin the dart closed. If you have bigger boobs or curves in other areas, you could add padding on your dress form or while you're creating these new darts, try it on back and forth to make sure that it fits your body properly. For the back side of the shirt, pin the center back down first and then go ahead and pin the side seam down where it naturally falls. Then with the extra space in between, you can start forming your dart along the princess seam. It should blend into where the mid armhole is. You don't want to take it up too high because you need some room for your back to bend and move around. Everybody's body is different, so just keep trying it on as you go. For my back darts, it's just a regular triangle dart that points up to the shoulders, but for your shirt or body type, it might be different and you might do fisheye darts or maybe you just need to take in a little bit at the waist. Once both sides are draped, it's time to make our markings on the dress form. I first make a dart on the apex in the front. This is a very important marking for pattern making and creating darts. Next, mark both sides of the dart legs. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll true it up later. When draping and marking, we're only working on one side of the dress form, usually the right side, so don't worry about fitting the left side yet. For the back, the apex would be where my shoulder blades are and I marked both sides of the dart legs as well. Take off the shirt and lay it down to true up the markings. 
I don't remember how far away from the apex the point of the dart is supposed to start. It's either a half inch or one inch away, but I just made mine 5 8 Basically, you don't want the points of the dart to hit exactly at the apex because it can create a pointy boob look. What I was taught was to measure 5 eighths or however far away from the apex and that will be the new start of your dart. Next, from that new dart point, draw a straight line down the middle of your dart in between the dart legs to split it in half. And then you can mark the dart legs evenly. To evenly transfer the markings onto the left side of the shirt, just fold your shirt in half and stick pins into the dart point through the other side and all along the shape of the dart. Then just flip the shirt over and mark where the pins are sticking out to transfer the dart onto the other side. Next, prepare each dart to be sewn by folding them in half so that the dart legs are facing each other and pinning the two layers together. The first two I'm sewing are fisheye darts in the front. So since both ends are pointy, as you sew, you want to blend the points into the shirt. That means you're literally sewing on the crease of the fold, catching the shirt before you bring it back out to sew the rest of the dart and then blend it back in when you get to that corner. As you get closer to the apex or pointy ends, about a half inch away from the end, you want to lower your stitch length so that it's very tight. And then use the hand wheel instead of the presser foot to blend the last few stitches into the shirt. The trick is to catch the shirt by a thread so when you reach the corner, there's no bubbles or puckers on the right side. Lastly, I prefer to not backstitch on my machine when sewing darts, so I leave the threads long and to finish it off, just hand knot it a few times. Then you'll just repeat this process to all of your darts. Afterwards, I can go back and fit the side seams to my liking. This is all up to you and how fitted you want your shirt to be. And it looks like I need to trim some of the armhole away as well. So the new side seam and trim the extra material away. You want to keep in mind how much you took in from the armhole so you know how much to take in from the sleeve so that it fits the new shape. If you're unsure, just make small adjustments to the sleeve to see if it'll fit the armhole. If it doesn't, you can take in more or less. Remember, it's all trial and error and quite a process to get it to fit correctly. Here, I'm seeing if the sleeves fit and decided to trim a little more from the top of the sleeves. If the sleeves are too big by just a little, you can ease it in by sewing two rows of basting stitch along the top and it should end up fitting perfectly. Now I can go ahead and pin the sleeves to the armhole and sew them together. Thank you. 
Lastly, I rehemmed the bottom of the shirt where I sewed the new side seams, and I'm finished. I am not a professional, but I hope this video gives you an idea on how you can fix your clothes at home by adding darts. It is more challenging fitting it on yourself though, especially in the back. I can see that I can probably take in a little more at the waist so that it's not so baggy. At the same time, if your shirt doesn't have any stretch to it, I don't recommend making it completely fitted because your body needs some room to move. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY fashion. And be sure to head on over to Letitia's channel. I'll link her video down in my description box. So check that out and see what she created from her collared shirt. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.